and stopping is the hard part. Stop you just drop it. Just drop it. Yeah, that's the chainsaw. Stop the and it will stop. Oh, good. <laughs> well. <laughs> Uh, welcome to Disrupt Ed TV, uh, where in every program we talk about some disruptive idea that you can use in your school to create a better outcome, mm -hmm. make the school a better place. But uh, today, our disruptive idea is actually a person. Uh, we're here today with uh, Chad Flexen, who teaches, but I, I don't want to say teaches, he actually facilitates STEM teaching in Harrison Township in South Jersey. Isn't that right, Chad? That, that's correct. Um, technically, I am an administrator, but I work with our teachers to support them mm -hmm. uh, with the community and with all students in our district. And that's what makes the, your role really is the disruptive idea in a sense. That role was created around helping K through six teachers integrate STEM into their normal classroom that is correct. So to innovate STEM, but also any types of innovations that may not directly be tied to like STEM careers. Mm -hmm. uh, we're one to one with Google Chromebooks for the past four years. Um, but I was main part when I was a classroom teacher of piloting that and integrating in the classroom. But not all teachers were as comfortable. So my job became to make those teachers comfortable. Oh, that's perfect. And part of your job is to liaison with people from future ready schools and uh, make sure that the technology base is correct for the school and Th that's correct so okay. um, I was part of leading the team for us to attempt for certification for future ready both our schools mm -hmm. did attain that this year I was actually at the school school board's uh, convention in November to accept the award on behalf of our district we mm -hmm. were one of the 63 schools that's terrific yeah, Congratulations. That's great. thank you and a lot of it is because that role was created in the school. Uh, I would definitely say that my role and another role, our language arts coordinator position, which is similar to mine, but focuses on all of the ELA integration, mm -hmm. um, is really what helped our district go beyond like our walls. Well, that's, see, that's ex exciting to me is that you're taking an administrator role, a position, an administrator's mm -hmm. position, and applying it to the academic integration of all the grades around mm -hmm. a particular subject or around technology in your mm -hmm. case. Yeah. And that really, had, apparently, that's made a difference. Well, I would say that what makes my role the most unique is I do not do any evaluations for our teachers. Mm -hmm. So many times when you think of an administrator, they're the one that writes evaluations, um, you know, when they go into classrooms, where I can go into classrooms freely and teachers ask me to come into classrooms um, and there's, there's no bias, there's no fear. And I think that relationship building is what's really empowering our teachers to, to ask for more support. Yeah, there's nothing punitive about working with you. Correct. And that's, that's great. Right. So, uh, so uh, you're an administrator. You have an administrative role, but there's no reason why I wouldn't invite you right. in my classroom. Correct. Mm -hmm. It's all good. It's that's all, it's all yeah. positive. Okay. <laughs> Talk about innovation. You, you went to school for innovation. That, that is correct. So uh, I was lucky enough in 2016 <clears throat> to start looking at uh, going back to school for my master's. And I, to be honest, I knew I didn't want to be a principal. Mm -hmm. I knew I didn't want to be a a suit as they call it like okay. a, a typical principal or director of curriculum and such mm -hmm. um, and I found a school in Texas Lamar University uh, which I'd never heard of but then I saw them on TV They're, they have a division one football team um, wow. big school in Texas okay. and uh, their online uh, program that they just started was in digital learning and leading and my main professors were from Canada Texas um, my cohort of students was from Alabama Pennsylvania New Jersey Florida um, and that experience really opened up my eyes to uh, disruptive innovations and change. Mm. So I became a change agent. That's great. Yeah. I mean, uh, so tell me what a change agent does in uh, particular <laughs> in role. So because um, I've always wondered. I mean, I've wondered that. Yeah. So I had to learn what a change agent does um, by kind of jumping in head first, mm -hmm. um, by not being afraid to uh, try things. And and I think that's what makes my role. Um, very powerful is teachers will say, well, I don't know how to do this and I don't either, but I'm willing to throw an idea out there and I'm actually the person that will go and do it. So we said, for example, well, we need to have green screens in our school district, mm -hmm. but they cost a lot of money if you want a professional studio. The high school down the street has one, but they never use it that often. Mm -hmm. Well, I did some Googling, found some paint, through paint on our walls. Our custodians were like, well, why do you want to paint the wall? I was like, just do it, let's mm -hmm. try it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Found an app on an iPad, we have green screens. This year, I said, let's paint every vestibule in the school. Wow. And now that the most popular used spaces in our classrooms, because we have many recording studios in every hallway. So 
we never would have thought to do that, but I was mm -hmm. like, let's try it. Let's try it. You're let's not afraid it. to take a risk. I, I, I'm not. I'm not. Well, there's, I mean, there is no <laughs> downside to any of this. Yeah. I mean, you're not talking about spending a lot of money. You're not talking about breaking the bank at all. Well, and that, that, that also goes into some of the things that I do. Uh, when I first was hired in, uh, I started <clears throat> July 1st of 2007, uh, 2016. Mm -hmm. And, um, we had a classroom that was a computer lab. It was actually my formal classroom when I was a math and language arts teacher. Mm -hmm. And I said, we don't need this classroom anymore. Like, let's make it what people call a maker space. Mm -hmm. um, but that term has kind of been thrown around. It's almost like kind of like stereotypes now. So mm -hmm. we called it a design studio. Okay. And when we did that, we had no money. Mm -hmm. So what did we do? I said, well, we need standing height tables because that seems to be a very popular thing when you're in like a workspace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we took our old computer tables, jacked them up, built new legs. There okay. we go. Who did the work? Built the custodian and, and myself. Uh -huh. We painted it ourselves. We did, we did it on a shoestring budget and we mm -hmm. asked our community to um, bring in the materials to get things started. That's great. Yeah. And then that now got a lot of positive feedback and now we are getting our PTA to support us. So, oh, good. You know. We'll see. Ultimately, the parents have to like. Well, it. I mean, that's part of my job too, is right. a liaison to the parents. Um, they helped us finance <clears throat> our 3D printers. Mm -hmm. um, they helped us finance more purchases um, with certain iPads and um, other type of technolo technology-based learning tools for to support computer science and coding. Mm -hmm. Okay. How do the kids react to all this? Uh, so, I mean. Every, our, our community is, is amazing. Our students mm -hmm. are, are great kids. Mm -hmm. um, I really couldn't complain about any of our kids in our hallways. Mm -hmm. And I think they love every single teacher that works in, uh, works in the building, mm -hmm. every staff member. And I'm very lucky that I'm like a very popular person with the kids because mm -hmm. they love doing the types of things that we're trying to share with the teachers. They, they so Mr. Flax is coming in today. <laughs> he's <laughs> well, I mean, well, it's tr it, it is, and I, when I was in the classroom, I felt like having a positive and great rapport with the kids right. was one of the most crucial things. Mm -hmm. um, I use my sense of humor. Um, I, I know I'm sitting down, but I use my size. I, I'm six foot two. Mm -hmm. um, we have, I think, two male teachers in our K-3 building. So okay. when I walked into the classrooms in kindergarten and taught them a math lesson, mm -hmm. they were blown away because right. they never, they never, they've never yeah. experienced that. You're before. the biggest teacher they ever. Uh, so. Exactly. <laughs> um, so that that actually allows me to use that to my advantage. But mm -hmm. then once I gain the, the students' trust and the teachers then can see me, where teachers have told me like you're so good with the first graders, like I never would have thought that. Good with now the first now I have the teachers support like right. buy into me that they can trust me to do things. Right. Well, we need. To to take a break. Uh, sure. When we come back, Chad, uh, maybe we can talk a little bit about STEM for right. kindergarten mm -hmm. students. Awesome. Uh, I think it'd be fun to hear about that. So okay. we'll be right back with more Disrupt Ed TV after this break. Come here. Thank you. All right. Planning a large scale event or conference? Consider Brookdale Community College and its versatile Collins Arena. The Collins Arena is the premier venue for all kinds of corporate and community events. Live concerts and celebrity happenings, trade shows and expositions, sporting events and tournaments. The Collins Arena has countless layout options to meet your needs. Bring your next event to life at the Collins Arena at Brookdale Community College. Go to brookdalecc.edu slash events and start planning your next event now. Welcome back, everybody, to Disrupt Ed TV. Uh, my name is Al Cini. My name is Joe Osmendi. Uh, and this is Chad Flexen mm -hmm. from Harrison Township Schools. And uh, he's the creative guy. I have that written down here because that's what, they, that's what they call you. And you might remember, before the break, we were talking to Chad about STEM training for kindergarten students. Kids, little kids. So for all the teachers out there who watch our program who teach early education, tell us how you do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so... We approach kindergarten like we do any grade level. Um, and the one thing that we saw was in kindergarten and first grade, we typically allow our students to play, to explore a lot of tactile experiences. Mm -hmm. And then as they get older, that starts to disappear. Um, it just becomes either reading, writing, or if you have a tablet or, or a computer, you just do everything on there. Mm -hmm. So we actually used kindergarten to inspire 
what we use is called um, Design Studio Missions. <coughs> and we create a mission that's run across the entire district. So when I go into a kindergarten classroom in September, we created an activity where they had to create a harness or helmet to hold an apple for a relay race. Oh, oh, so great. the kids were given materials. They uh -huh. had to build something that they could wear on their head and run back and forth in the gymnasium with apples on their head. Oh. Now, the kids didn't realize what they were doing, but they were doing STEM. Uh, because right. they were sure. engineering and prototyping a device, and then we add restrictions. And then what we do is we just scale that to the different grade levels. Uh -huh. So at, in our sixth grade relay, they were limited to materials, limited to the amount of time they had to create that. Mm -hmm. uh, we could disrupt uh, possibly saying with they couldn't talk or they could only use uh, certain forms of communication. So at our kindergarten level, we give them the same experiences as we do our sixth graders. Mm -hmm. We just scale it down or we make it more appropriate. How um, did they respond to that? Uh, well, the kids love it, uh, and the parents really have been supportive because when we create our missions, we actually ask for the parents to participate in the, the donation of materials or goods. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so, for example, in December, we needed to have a mission, and it, it's becoming the winter and the holidays, but we want to be neutral in regards to not doing anything too seasonal. Mm -hmm. So I focused on uh, the winter solstice. Mm. And they learned about the solar system and why it's considered the yes. shortest day. Mm -hmm. um, but we needed something tactile. Right. Mm -hmm. So I found, this is where the creativity comes in, that uh, Stonehenge, the reason it was created was to track the lunar cycle and mm -hmm. the winter solstice. Mm -hmm. So the kids with Lego blocks or um, just wooden blocks recreated a, a scaled oh. model of Stonehenge in a time challenge. I guess they used a compass to orient that. And then, and then they... Um, well, in kindergarten they didn't. Well, in kindergarten they just had pictures. Right, okay. <laughs> they worked on they worked on about. circles and uh, they learned about right. semicircles. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then but, had to. but what we also <laughs> talked about to tie into the other grade levels uh, were well, yeah. how did they move these giant rocks? How did right. they actually build it? Oh, mm -hmm. So then teachers then decide how far they want to take that. Well, our social studies teachers loved it because they could tie that connection right. to the um, ancient Egypt because they do a whole unit on the Egyptians and how okay. they built sure. the pyramids. Uh -huh. I mean, my one social studies teacher, like, he found all these old materials that he had about Stonehenge and was ecstatic that he got to then use it again mm. uh, for this mission. Oh, that's great. So blocks, construction paper? Uh, well, we also had parents donate rocks. Rocks. Actual yeah. rocks. Okay. And um, I looked more into rock balancing mm -hmm. for a scaled model, and we found that uh, it was actually used in a lot of meditation and in, in art. Mm -hmm. So we really try to go cross-curricular, and I found videos of um, actually world-famous sculptors that go around the world and create these rock balancing. Like, the, the physics and mathematics behind it is apparent when you try to actually start to balance when these you rocks. Start to balance these things and so out. we added a rock balancing challenge, and uh -huh. uh, the kids really liked it. And then what we created was a, uh, a flip grid topic, um, and then the teachers would then video the students, and then each grade level could see each other's sculptures. Oh, you involve the community in all this and, too. It, exactly. Well, and that's, uh, I think right. that's, yeah. that's so and important. And so, so January is coming up. Mm -hmm. We have to come up with a new mission. Mm -hmm. Do you have it? They have that well, working? well, so uh, the, the tough part, I want to keep my job for a while. Uh -huh. And because we're doing this K-6, mm -hmm. I'm going to have to come up with a new mission every single month for the rest of my career there because okay. everyone will already have done that they Apple will have done the last mission. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah. January is coming up. We um, we know there's going to be a lot of excess cardboard from people ordering um, oh, Christmas right. presents yeah. and holiday right. gifts. Holiday gifts. Uh -huh. uh, I know one way is to uh, use that cardboard to build. And what we found was uh, we wanted to focus on a winter animal this time mm -hmm. instead of a to like a seasonal topic and mm -hmm. we chose penguins. Mm -hmm. And I found out in um, this is my time. This is my research time. Right. Um, in New Zealand, penguins are kind of like uh, stray turkeys or dogs. Really? They just come in and walk all over the town, and they get hit by vehicles, or they get attacked yeah. by animals. Mm -hmm. And they build these penguin boxes, kind of like birdhouses, and just mm -hmm. plop them all over the place. Yeah. And the penguins then turn that into a nest, and it's a safe haven for them. Yeah. So I actually found some schematics for them, and kids are going to design their own penguin boxes using the cardboard that we have. What's interesting about this, Chad, is that because you're freed, in a sense, from the normal responsibilities of a teacher, mm -hmm. you have the kind of latitude to come up with these ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a big part of, of my job. Like, that <clears throat> idea mm -hmm. took me, you know, probably half a day. 
mm -hmm. last week with my with my colleague, and what we did was we created uh, a, a Padlet uh, online, which is uh, basically a digital platform for us to post all of our videos, infographics, articles, because mm -hmm. we really try to go cross-curricular. We'll attach mm -hmm. literature for them to read or research. Mm -hmm. um, we'll, we'll find uh, YouTube videos to link, and then we embed them in our Edpuzzle program because we filter our YouTube videos to make sure it's safe for all the kids. Mm -hmm. So we do all that work so the teachers can literally have this Padlet I give it to you, mm -hmm. you're teaching second grade, well, what do I do? Well, Chad and Annalisa, which is my colleague, mm -hmm. Annalisa Rodano, did it all for us, and now we get to decide, do we want to go into this area mm -hmm. of the learning experience? Do we want to go straight to the challenge? Um, and it's really been powerful. You're oh, kind yeah. of like Harrison Township MacGyver. You know, really. <laughs> <laughs> take yeah, mater MacGyver common materials and suddenly come up with these solutions. Yeah. We, we try to use everything that we have. Right. Uh, I mean, that's fantastic. Yeah. We, no, we, that's a great we, idea. The first, uh, t this is a funny story, but the very first uh, summer in, in a new position, we were cleaning out some old closets mm -hmm. and we found some old science materials that had been purchased from like 1998. Mm -hmm. um, and in there were uh, like vinegar that, and, and baking soda and, and right. all these things. And what mm -hmm. we did was we just parceled it all out. Mm -hmm. We're not going to throw any of this away. This is still good stuff. I it. found old kits that they don't teach anymore. There was magnets in there. Let's oh, take those okay. magnets mm -hmm. out. Um, and what we did was we created like a library of materials for the teachers. Mm -hmm. So like in regards to that, you right. have to use what you have. Because yeah. in education, money only goes so far. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. And we have to make sure that we can support that. Well, you know, it's uh, we, we need to take a break. But when we come back, I know you've written a few papers on some of this and mm -hmm. maybe we can talk a little bit about what you've published yes and yeah. later uh, at the end of the program there are going to be teachers out there who want to use some of these missions <laughs> and uh, they're going to want to call you or maybe email you to yeah. find out how they can do of that of course okay. so we'll be right back after this break on disrupted tv with chad flexen yep Thanks. stick around thank you I, I know you had fun. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Disrupted TV. Uh, my name is Al Sini. I'm Joe Osimendi. And, uh, and we're here with Chad Flexen, who is uh, just a, a great guest great. to have here and mm -hmm. with great ideas. And, uh, you know, we were talking a little bit during the break about um, creating a free classroom experience, which is really what you do, especially for small children. Some teachers, some people could worry that if you give kids a little bit of freedom, they can get unruly or raucous. But you've never seen... No, uh, what we've seen uh, is a positive outlook on the missions or the use of our design studios. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, we create uh, videos using our green screens to kind of like hype up the missions mm -hmm. and, they, and the teachers then show them to the students. And uh, one teacher came to me the other day and said, I know these missions are making an impact because a student was absent and came in the next day and was worried that we went to the design studio. Mm. Really? Yes. So, um, and that student, you would say, maybe typically has some behavioral issues. Mm -hmm. And she said it, she notices that they want, it's a goal, um, right. not necessarily a reward, like a prize or sure. a carrot, because it's a learning experience. Right. So learning if we can make learning experiences our rewards, it's a win-win for us. Yeah, so it's interesting that you mentioned, too, you video some of these experiences and then play them back. Yes. Uh, how, what, what effect is that? So, um, so once again, one of my roles is to look at the best at, uh, practices for us to mm -hmm. re reflect. So just recently, actually, um, I, through the district, we purchased uh, a swivel robot system, mm -hmm. which you place an iPad in a motorized robot, mm -hmm. and then you wear a microphone tracker. And as you walk around the space, it will actually track you and record your HD audio. Mm -hmm. And then you can plant microphones everywhere in the, in the classroom to get student audio. Mm -hmm. um, and I used that recently um, when I was doing a mathematics counting lesson um, in a uh, first grade classroom. Mm -hmm. And the kids were like enthralled that they were going to be on film. But I said, if you look at the camera, I can turn the camera off with this button. And the mm -hmm. next thing you know, they were fully engaged with me. Right. They're participating in this video lesson. And then I can send that to the, the teacher, the kindergarten teacher, uh -huh. to, see, to model my questioning strategies, but also to see which students were active participants, which ones were kind of just hanging around. Um, mm -hmm. So we're starting to use that to really help our teachers and also 
for our students to say, oh, well, I don't do that in class. And, and, and it's more of like you a self-contained reflection. Sure. Mm -hmm. So I would want teacher A not to worry about someone else watching you. Um, I myself haven't seen myself teach mm -hmm. since yeah. I just did that a few weeks ago. You're constantly kind of looking for innovative ideas, aren't yes. you? Yes. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. And, yeah. and using the motion tracking cameras means you don't need to operate any equipment. No. You just set it up and do your thing. And, the, and, the greatest, and it picks up all the activity. And the greatest part is we <clears> have um, a go-getting teacher in sixth grade mm -hmm. uh, who uses the Socratic seminar mm -hmm. method of teaching um, some of her lessons. And I witnessed one of her lessons. and. The topic was, should student athletes be paid in college? Mm -hmm. So these are sixth graders debating this topic. Really? Wow. And she records her lessons. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that she just takes the iPad and props it up in the back of the room. And you can hear her because she's a great teacher. She mm -hmm. projects her voice and has good <laughs> questions. But you couldn't hear the students. Mm -hmm. So what did I do? Um, you may have seen it on Shark Tank. I got her a cue ball. It's the microphone ball that you can throw. And it has a microphone inside of it. Mm -hmm. So now the students, they have a microphone to talk into and they can throw it. And it, Wow, mm. that and is now, a great idea. And now idea. the audio is projected. Yeah. Okay, so you have a budget. <laughs> I, do have, I do have a budget. Okay. Um, but it's, it's limited to where I have to make very responsible decisions mm -hmm. um, that can transcend like time. So for example, I can make the initial purchases for like R&D mm -hmm. and then our tech department can decide if that's something that can be sustainable. That mm -hmm. could be sustainable. So I that. showed that to our tech department. They said this is going to help us with some of our audio issues with some of our um, FM systems mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. either special ed services or 504s. Mm -hmm. We could actually now use this microphone to get students to talk louder because typically a teacher will wear a microphone in a classroom. Mm -hmm. okay. But when kids participate, they don't hear it. So, yeah, hear so now that is actually going to help well, us. This also it creates a little bit of structure, too, because unless you have the ball, you can't talk. Right? Well, the first thing a teacher said to me, um, a special teacher in sixth grade, said it empowered one of her students who seldom participates. She participated, she had a great answer, and she was proud to do it. Right. So, like that email to me was like, okay, I'm going to get a few more. Yeah, right. And then, and so things like that. Okay. Yep. So, so when you're not when you're not doing crazy things like this in the classroom, <laughs> <laughs> which I think are great, and you're also writing papers. Uh, so um, as I mentioned before, with my uh, master's program, a goal was to try to get published. So okay. write an article that you think would help <clears throat> other educators. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things we do in our district, in our four five six building, thanks to our principal Lisa Heenan, is we um, do student ed camps. So if you've been to an ed camp before, it's a professional learning model. And actually, I've met both of you guys at an ed camp before. Oh. I don't know if you remember. I do. <laughs> the ed camp in South Jersey. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. It's good to see you guys. Um, Audubon. So, yep, yeah, Audubon. Uh -huh. yeah, but um, an ed camp means you get to pick what you want to talk about, right. what you want to learn about. Uh -huh. Well, we allowed that to happen for our students. Mm -hmm. And with our student ed camps, um, we allow students to decide what they want to do, and they rotate once a cycle, which is every six days, mm -hmm. to participate in that. Hmm. So last year, we had students who uh, created a little free library and uh, actually mounted it in front of the firehouse on the main street of the town. Mm. They collected the books, they wrote the mayor, they got the donations. That was their actual project. Hmm. Um, other students did a school beautification uh, where they created um, artistic renderings on ceiling tiles and we mounted them in the hallway. Mm -hmm. Some students learned magic tricks and learned how mathematical algorithms could play into card tricks. Mm -hmm. um, we have kids deciding on what they want to do. And I wrote an article that was published through ASCD and I was you know, thankful of that because I thought, you know, this is just something we're doing. Um, but I actually got a lot of people that reached out to me after that that have visited our school see it in action mm -hmm. um, and the student ed camps themselves have been very popular for us to really promote student voice and student choice because that's mm -hmm. a very big buzzword right now about student-centered learning mm -hmm. um, but how do you actually do that well you turn it over to the kids wow. um, and that too was a challenge to support the teachers because sure. many teachers it's difficult to relinquish that that control right. of the that's classroom, right. exactly. classroom. Sure. and when you do um, Magical things happen. You well, just have to really, you have to see it through and be willing to. Well, they, they have to let go, but you also have to not let them down right. because that's important too. I mean, when when, right. it, when you come in there, you've got to perform. You've well, got to be able yep. to do this. And, and expectations are still just as important, and classroom mm -hmm. management is a huge part of that. Right. And um, 
we've seen great things from the student ed camps as well. That's terrific. Okay, now we're coming up on the end of the program where you get to tell everybody how to reach out to you and learn about all these missions. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, get to know more about how you fill that role in Harrison right. Township. Uh, but before that, I just wanted to ask you a quick question. Who do you report to? Who manages you? <laughs> Nobody. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Um, so, uh, technically, I work for our curriculum department. So, okay, I have okay. a chief academic officer. His name's uh, Dr. Andy Davis. Okay. Um, he has been like my mentor and, and, and guide. He was my principal at one point when I was a classroom teacher. Mm -hmm. um, then he was the director of curriculum. Now he's the chief academic officer in regards to his title. And he, um, Annalisa Rodano, and I are our curriculum team. Okay. And um, he is who I report to, but the greatest thing about our administration team, including my superintendent, Dr. Uh, Missy Peretti, they trust us oh, that's important. to do things. So right. he doesn't tell me what to do. That leaves you free I to report do, to the students. I just do it. Yeah. Well, see, that means, I mean, that means you report to the students. The yeah. students actually yeah, tell you what they, what they need. It's and my job to that. support the teachers in creating a powerful experience for our learners. We're, we're at the, that part of our program where you get to that great story and okay. you get to tell everybody how to learn more by calling you or reaching out. Sure, to sure. Uh, so my name is Chad Flexen from uh, Mullica Hill and Harrison Township School District. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Mr. Flexen, F-L-E-X-O-N. Uh, I also have a website, cflexen.com. And I sit on a few committees and advisory boards. So I'm willing to have you visit our school uh, you can email me or call me. Uh, just check out my website and all my contact information is on there. And hopefully I'll see you on Twitter as well. Okay. Chad Flexen, you've been a great guest. Thank you. Oh, oh, guy right. Yeah. Guy guy right. Guy guy right. for education. There you go. Uh, thank, you. thank you, Chad, for appearing thank on our you. program. And thank all of you for joining thank us you. today on uh, Disrupt Ed TV. My name is Al Cini. I'm Joe Asamendi. And uh, if you're a chief academic officer at a school out thank there, taking some admin money maybe and reallocating it in creative ways to allow somebody like uh, Chad to do that kind of magic in your school, mm -hmm. that might be a great disruptive idea. So thank you all for joining us and we'll see you again on Disrupted TV. Mm -hmm. Bye. Thank you. All right.